Good morning. It is good to be here with you this morning. It's good to have you here this morning. Could I invite you to please stand and look somebody straight in the eye and say, I'm so glad you're here this morning. Please stand and greet one another. <laughs> she is not here. Not here. So I'll be doing the liturgy, I think. Good to have you here. Hi. Would you join with me in our call to worship? And I invite you to stand as you are able. Lord, our hearts are still glowing from the joy of Easter. Yet despite ourselves and the good news we embrace, it hurts to hope. It is discouraging. Yet we believe. Join together singing. Join with me with our, for our opening prayer. Lord, we are Easter people, people of hope and anticipation. Help us to see you in the little things of life. Help us to see you in worship and prayer, in each other, including those different from us. Help us to see you in mystery and the breaking of bread. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Excuse me, will you join with me in the scripture? Sing praises of the Lord, you his faithful pre people. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth that my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord my God, I will praise you forever. Say 
The Gospel reading is from Luke 24, 13 through 35. Encounter on the Emmaus Road. On that same day, two disciples were traveling to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking to each other about everything that had happened. While they were discussing these things, Jesus himself arrived and joined them on their journey. They were prevented from recognizing him. He, and he said to them, Why are you, what are you talking about as you walk along? They stopped their faces. They stopped their faces downcast. The one named Cleopas replied, are you, only, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who is unaware of the things that have taken place over the last few days? And he said to them, What things? They said to him, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, because of his powerful deeds and words, he was recognized by God and all the people as a prophet. But our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped he was the one who would redeem Israel. All these things happened three days ago, but there's more. Some women from our group have left us. Stunned, they went to the tomb early this morning and didn't find his body. They came to us saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who told him that he is alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women said. They didn't see him. Then Jesus said to them, you foolish people, your dull minds keep you from believing all that the prophets talked about. Wasn't it necessary for Christ to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then he interpreted for them the things written about himself in all the scriptures, starting with Moses and going through all the prophets. When they came to Emmaus, he acted as if he were, was going on ahead, but they urged him, saying, Stay with us. It's nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them, and after he took his seat at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, weren't our hearts on fire when he spoke to us along the road, and when he explained the scriptures for us? They got right up and returned to Jerusalem, they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying to each other, The Lord really has risen. He appeared to Simon. Then the two disciples described what had happened along the road and how Jesus made known to them as he broke the bread. Good morning. Oh, we need to say that again. Good morning. Oh, much better. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And may God add his blessings to our time together under the word this morning. Amen. Hope. Hope is an important quality of the heart that can, aid, can keep us or enable us to be able to see past present circumstances and continue to believe that good things are going to be happening, even when they're not necessarily happening. Hope is important. When hope dies, when hope is disappointed, how does that affect us? When you hope for something and it doesn't come to fruition, when you hope for something and it doesn't really happen, it's like it dries up our bones and we want to give up. In our Gospel reading this morning, we have two disciples on Easter Day, the day of the resurrection, who were walking back home. And they were feeling despondent, they were feeling discouraged, they were feeling hopeless, 
because they had hoped that Jesus would be the one who would deliver them, and they didn't understand. They had seen him die. They knew he was buried. And then that morning, they were getting reports of him being alive. But they knew better because death is powerful. So they knew it wasn't possible for him to be alive. What they didn't realize is that life is more powerful than death. Eyes wide shut. When I chose that title for the message this morning, one of my friends said, oh, you can't use that. That's an erotic, sensual film. Tom Cruise, Nicole Kidman were in it. Eyes wide shut. I've never seen it. I don't know if you have or not, but sometimes in life we can have our eyes open in a sense, but have a veil over our eyes. It's like we can't see. We, we aren't able to see the good news or the hope that's there. Have you ever been in a spot like that where you had hoped something would happen and it didn't happen? Maybe you lost a loved one through death. Or went through the death of a relationship, boyfriend or girlfriend breaking up, or a divorce. Sometimes we get the diagnosis from the doctor and we get bad news and our hearts sink. And sometimes we can feel like hope can die. In our gospel reading this morning, as these two disciples were walking along, they were talking about all the things that had happened. They were talking about what the, their leaders, their religious leaders had done, how about how Jesus had let himself be arrested, how he had been tormented and convicted wrongly and then crucified and that they had, and they had watched him buried. And as they were walking along, Jesus comes up and he's walking along with them. But their eyes were prevented from seeing him. Not because God was preventing them from seeing him. Why do you suppose they were prevented from seeing him? It was because they had lost hope. And they thought that death was more powerful than life. And they couldn't recognize Jesus walking with them. It wasn't as if God had closed their eyes. But it was as if the sadness that they were going through, their loss and their disappointment, had closed their eyes, and they couldn't, couldn't see the reality of life right there with them. So Jesus comes up and he's walking with them, and he says, what are you talking about? And they stop. And they look down. And then they look at him and they go, what? Are you the only one that's new to Jerusalem? Are you a stranger that you don't know what's going on? And then he confronts them, gently, but he confronts them. And he says, oh, you're so foolish and dull of heart. What keeps you from really seeing Messiah? What keeps you from really seeing who Jesus is and what he had to do for the sake of our salvation? And he opens up the Bible from the Old Testament through the prophets. And as he's speaking to them, they say later on that their hearts were glowing. Sometimes our eyes are closed and we can't see for the life of us what's going on. But sometimes something can happen. Their eyes had been prevented from being able to see Jesus. But then as they're walking along, they come to their home in Emmaus. Jesus pretends as if he's going to continue to go on. And they urge him to stay. And you, probably, you might be familiar with the hymn, Abide With Me, comes from this particular passage. They say, no, stay with us. It's evening. The day is gone. The day is almost done. Why don't you stay with us and have supper with us? So he does stay with them. And he goes into the house with them, sits with them, and then does something incredibly unusual. The guest becomes the host. And he takes bread, and he blesses it, and he breaks it, and he gives it to them. And as he's doing that, they see something very familiar, and their eyes are opened, and they recognize Jesus for who he is. And then what happened? Poof, he disappeared, because he's, he's different. He's the same Jesus, but it's after the 
after the cross and after the resurrection, and he disappears, and they get so excited because they recognize Jesus and they know he's alive. So they beat feet back to Jerusalem. They find the other disciples up in the upper room and they hear the story about how Peter has seen Jesus and how the women have seen Jesus. And they say, we've seen him too. One of my favorite songs, I'm a music lover. You probably are too, a lot of you are. And a song from, well, Johnny Nash sang it. Uh, Jimmy Cliff wrote it. You might re recognize it. Let me give it a try with you. I can see clearly now the rain has stopped. Remember that? I can see all obstacles in my way. Gone are the dark clouds that had made me blind. It's going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. Yeah, you could, if you listen, you can hear Johnny Nash singing that. <laughs> Great song. And if, if you're an appreciator of music like I am, you'll know that a lot of the secular songs can have a spiritual message. And this one certainly does have a spiritual message to that. Sometimes in life, we get so caught up in the bad that we can't see the good. About a year ago, my oldest sister, Barb, Barb and Rick, live in Wisconsin, their house burned down. It burned down in rapid fashion. She had come home from work, parked her car, GM car, I think it was a Pontiac or an Oldsmobile, parked it in the car, turned the ignition off, walked in, um, her son-in-law, her daughter and son-in-law with their three kids were living with them. He was fixing dinner. And after about five minutes, my sister says she smelled smoke and she thought, oh, he's burning supper. And then she realized it wasn't supper that was burning. She went to the, to the garage, adjacent to the kitchen, opened up the door, and flames were everywhere. The house went down in short order. I think it took like an hour or two hours for the whole house to just completely burn, and they were just able to get themselves out. With the clothes on their back, they lost everything. All the people got out. Rick and Barb got out, my sister and her husband, the kids got out, and her son-in-law and daughter, they were able to get out. They did lose one pet, but they were able to get everything else out. They lost cell phones, clothes, books, everything. A couple days later, they were sorting through all the burnt stuff. And maybe you've seen people do that, maybe you've done it yourself, kind of kicking through the ashes, the acrid smell trying to find something that had survived the fire. And you know what was on their mind, that heavy sense of loss. Sometimes in life, loss can be so intense. Sometimes in life, the good news can be so overshadowed by bad news that that's what we're due. We just kind of kick through. And then something happens, and even in the midst of the bad, we recognize God's presence. We recognize Jesus with us. It can happen in a church service, in the breaking of bread. It can happen through music, through a special song that means something to you. It can happen when a friend calls you or sends you a card, and all of a sudden you realize, I'm not alone. God is with me. There still is hope. My prayer for you today is that resurrection hope will still spring anew in you and that you will continue to be able to see Jesus in you and with you and through you and around you every day of your life because he is here and hope is still alive. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to join together with us as we affirm our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He he rose it from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let it be. 